Hi, I'm Disa in Hestakot and uh, uh, Herdis Reynsdóttir, full name. And I'm going to be doing another video. And uh, as I promised last time, we're going to be looking into training trot or specifically how to establish trot and get the trot a bit stronger uh, with a gated horse. Now, these are Icelandic horses, of course, and uh, Hestakot is in West of Ireland. We'll see what uh, the horse offers. He wasn't very much uh, educated, actually, when he came. And uh, due to different reasons, we haven't actually been very consistent in the training lately. But uh, I will see what happens. I'm going to just go and get him. He's having his breakfast now out here in the field. Hi again. These are here in Hestakot and Kalsi. We are um, ready. <laughs> oh, and uh, uh, the plan is to show a little bit of uh, trot. Uh, well, work anyway. We'll see. However, as many of you know, I always start with this long rain. Oh, and just while I remember, there are other few videos showing the first week when Kalsi just arrived. So he has only been here a short while. He wasn't very much trained when he came. And uh, uh, yeah, those videos, you can see them on my YouTube channel. And if you like these videos and you want to contribute, then feel free. Um, so here we're actually going to talk a little bit about trot and gated horses. Now, in the beginning, I always allow them just to stretch a little bit, just to make sure that they're calm and relaxed. I find that super important. And uh, sometimes with gated horses, you can't always be sure that they trot when you ask them to trot. And uh, sometimes people start to get kind of... Um, um, well, very cautious that they, for instance, don't like to have any rain control uh, or rain contact, sorry, because they feel like as soon as they let go or they have a little bit of a contact with the reins that the horse automatically just breaks into another gate. And uh, when that happens, which is quite common and has happened very often here with Kalsi as well, then it's often better just to keep on working in the gate that he offers, as in often it's tilt, make that a little bit harder and then try to use trot as a reward. Now I'm going to change direction, shift my seat a little bit, go a bit more here into the right side. And we've talked a little bit about the bending, about the top line in different videos. Uh, probably we'll come into that a little bit again. Uh, Kalsi is nowhere near good in that yet. I find that um, his, well, his response has uh, obviously improved, but of course uh, he, as I said, wasn't very, very much educated when he came and uh, didn't really respond to the leg or go sideways at all. Was quite, uh, um, well, not straight anyway, and uh, uh, very high with his head carriage often. So we've kind of been focusing a bit on that. Um, due to various reasons, it hasn't been very much consistency in the training lately, though. He has been doing a few lessons, but that's really about it. Um, now, as he is just getting there, that's what I was waiting for. When he stretches down and goes, that's when I also lift a little bit my seat, allowing the, the lengthening of the spine. And I always like that, so I kind of tend to wait for it if I can. So now I feel like he's kind of giving me a go ahead. It's time to work. So we'll go, <laughs> there you go, good boy. We'll go in a couple of stops. Oh, shift a little bit there. Oh, now get him to stop there. Shift him a little bit lower if I need. Um, he's not stretching his head up as much as he did, but he's still not as light as I would like him to be. I would like him to respond a little bit quicker oh, to my seat. That was a bit better. So, meaning that when I ask him to go forward, I kind of release my seat, go a tiny bit forward even with my upper body. When I ask him to stop, I squeeze a bit my bum, close my hands, but try not to really pull on the reins. But by squeezing a little bit by my bum, the upper body goes a little bit back. Oh, and it's kind of supposed to give him anyway the feeling that I'm not following anymore. And then if he's still a little bit high, I might lift my hands and send him then a little bit lower and immediately release then the rein. So I want him to feel like he's not being pulled down, definitely, and also not restrained. Lexi, get out. 
My dog is trying to help here. <laughs> there we go. And I have to be a bit careful that I don't, uh, that I'm not too crooked myself. Um, I'm afraid that most of us riders have more asymmetry than the horses really. So we often tend to be also maybe drifting to the outside, getting uh, stuck, not straight in the, in the body, maybe even tilting a bit in the sides, which is not really helpful, obviously, to the horse. Like now, I have to be careful that I'm still here a little bit on the right side. There you go. Especially on this side where he is a bit hesitant in bending at all. I'm kind of just see that I can loosen the shoulders a little bit, get him to there emphasize that I have the bending. You see, if I'm starting to talk about a bit the trot, what happened with him is when I started uh, working with him, he was very high. As I said, he did trot and he did tilt, but he wasn't very consistent. Now I changed my sheet over to the left. Uh, consistent meaning that he didn't necessarily keep it when he was supposed to, and he was certainly not between my aids. It was way too high and, uh, and as soon as I touched the reins, as you can see in these first videos, he did not respond correctly. He often just went up with his head and uh, shortened his top line. And now what we've been trying to work on a bit is to get him to be more relaxed, lengthen the top line there and respond a little bit to the leg gates as well. So that now he gives me a bit of shoulders and then the outside aid come in and guide him a little bit there. And instead of asking him straight to go into the trot, then I am going to start actually with tilt transitions. So these tilt transitions are better to start off with because if I start asking him to trot, he is very likely just to give me the tilt actually. And that happens specifically more after I checked and uh, yeah, was trying to influence more his top line. For the first, he got quite pacey in the tilt, still is in between. And, oh, and his trot was not at all stable. And uh, he kind of sometimes just offered me the tilt and maybe went into a few steps trot and went straight into tilt again or piggy pace even. And it has been improving a little bit, but as I said, it hasn't been very consistent lately. So we'll see what we get. So a few just transitions there, mainly just to see that he's in front of my leg, that he responds as soon as I tell him I want a little bit more energy without, there you go, without putting his nose straight up. There you go. And down to walk. Same thing there, that I can then tell him to slow down without losing his attention and without losing his top line completely up. And now we often say with the gated horses that you shouldn't beg for trot, you should allow it. And that means in a sense that you sometimes have to wait for the horse to ask for it themselves. And by meaning you work in the gate that the horse kind of offers you. And then you make them a little bit more work there, like a little bit of work on the suppleness. That is important in everything, obviously. I find, um, now, if I ask him just to trot straight away, he will probably take a few steps, but he might not stay in it. So I'll just get him to work a little bit more here in the tilt between my aids. Now I have a feeling he's hanging a little bit here on, my, on the left shoulder. It's a bit stuck, so I might need to move him a, a little bit there just to remind him. Leading inside rain a little bit, outside rain a little bit with him. A bit more energy. There. Now he gets a little bit pacey. I might need a little bit more energy. And sometimes by making the tilt something that he needs to work a little bit harder in, that makes the idea of the trot more appealing, you could say. So what I'm going to see now, once he has kind of taken a few rounds here in the tilt, I'll allow him to go a bit more straight. Ah, there he was actually thinking about the trot. And now I might see if I can ask him for it. I release my seat a little bit, go a little bit forward, use the voice signal. There we go. 
So now he goes into the trot. I stay in a bit of a light seat because I want him to feel like I'm not really pushing. I'm not really doing very much in the beginning. But I have a bit of a contact there in the rain and walk. And now he started to rush there a bit. Maybe I should have gone down to walk even a bit sooner. I did have a feeling he would stay in it, so I kind of asked him to stay a little longer. But when you are starting this specifically, it is kind of important that you don't ask for trot a full circle. Ask for trot, let's think more like four steps, 10 steps, half a circle, something like that. And not think that he has to stay in the trot for a long time. You want to reward what you're asking for. So now, Let's see if I can ask for the trot. If he gives me the tilt, I'll stay in the tilt and let him work a little harder in it and then offer the trot again. There, I get the trot. I might even do a little bit of a rising trot there. There we go. And he has still accepted pretty decently my contact. I would like him maybe, ah, uh, there he starts to speed up again. Easy. Talk to him a bit. Lose a little bit of contact there. There you go. And he's also hanging a bit there on the inside shoulder. I still feel like I can't really work very much with that at the moment in the trot. Whoa. So I prefer to go down to the walk and then send him a little bit sideways just to remind him, hey, think about that shoulder, please. Don't hang too much on it. Make sure that he is not too much just uh, uh, drifting towards the inside. There, now we'll give him a little break and go over to the other side. And by break, I mean simply quite long reins. I like him to feel like also I trust him that he is not being held. I think just as I did in the beginning, that that's super important for both horse and riders, that we kind of have that mutual understanding that once the reins come really loose, and it's not just about the reins, obviously, it's also about my seat, my breathing, that I kind of just relax a bit myself in a way. And then it means kind of you can relax, you can do what you want almost. <laughs> not, of course, lay down and roll, but, uh, and also not speed up, but stretch. And he has quite decent walk. I find that I would, yeah. There I asked for a little bit too much energy. He started to speed up too much. There, but now it comes a bit better. There you go, good boy. And now this side, the right, is not as steady. So that's why I started on the left with the trot transitions. I'm gonna do the same now. Start a little bit with the tilt. So tighten a bit my seat. Build up a little bit of energy. Oh, nice. easy. If he starts to just kind of rush straight away, then I might need to close my hands a little bit. Remind him, hey, hey. that's not really there. Just a few steps down to walk again. Just to remind him kind of that that's the energy that I was asking for without getting straight away something into my hand or that the top line gets too short. There you go. And again, and however, if he starts to shorten his top line and get too high with his nose, also in the trot, I'll see if he'll, uh, we'll demonstrate that for you a bit. Then I actually do the same as in the tilt. I lift a little bit my hands, bend my elbows a little more and send him down. Try to kind of see here, you follow him up. Just kind of tighten a little bit the legs around him to make sure he's following, he's sinking forward and wait for him there to drop a little bit more before then really releasing my, my hand. And it seemed like he started to think towards the trot there, so I'm gonna see if I can use the chance and ask him. And now if he would have popped into it, now he comes straight into the tilt. I'll just stay a little bit in the tilt, give him a little more there, a little bit lower would be better. And then I might ask him again, or basically, as I said, not not beg for it, but allow it. There we go. And I'm kind of a bit forward in my seat. I might use the rising trot. He's kind of gotten, um, yeah, steady enough for that. His trot isn't bad at all. There, easy. 
down there he comes a little bit too high and he's rushing a bit so i lift a little bit my hands there you go try to get him a bit lower and as he comes quite low and walk i try to go down to the walk on a moment where i'm rather happy with him where he is quite low now However, what often happens, and often happened with him as well, Lexi out, <laughs> out, <laughs> is that uh, when, for instance, I wanted to then slow him down to walk, he would just shift into tilt. It's no big deal. I already told him to walk, so I wouldn't really make any fuss about that. But what is maybe a little more uh, something to think about is that as soon as he shortens the top line and I lift a little bit my hands he then shifted over to trot very often uh, to tilt sorry very often and that is better i find than to not correct it when they're trotting around with their nose stretched out and maybe too high neck as well because what does he learn from that horses get better at doing what they are doing in a sense so if you ride them and you're not really happy with what they're doing then that also means that you are training them to be kind of steadier in exactly that which is maybe not what you were planning on doing Lexi stay stay there I see I need to focus more on this with my dog as well so again a little bit into the tilt for a moment and down to walk, walk, and then I'll offer, so I also try to make it clear that when I'm asking for tilt, I tighten a bit my seat, I build up the energy a little bit in the walk before the tilt. For the trot, I lean a little bit forward and make it a bit clearer at the moment. Of course, the goal is at some point that I can actually ask him to trot with more, well, collection is the wrong word, but more uphill. Brock. There you go. Uh, comes a little bit too high, I lift a little bit my hands, keep the contact a bit. And again, I prefer to correct him if I find that he is too high, even if I'm thinking, okay, I might lose the gate, like now he starts to speed up, and I lean, lead him into a smaller circle. He's also a little bit too loose. Lexi, out. Out, get out. There. Stay there. Good. A little bit better there. There you go. And here again, lifts a little bit. I wait for him. There. And also, if he goes, pops into the counter, same thing there. I just allow him, make sure that I'm not holding the inside drain too much. There, but he's starting to become a little steadier in the trot that I can actually work a little bit more with it. If I would have let him kind of just, huh, you see, there he went into the tilt a bit. And then sometimes it is because he lost his, his focus, his energy. So I need a little bit more forward thinking. A little bit the voice. But still I don't want him to rush either. So I have to be a bit careful there. There we go, down to walk, easy, allow him to stretch a bit there. Now the next thing that I would then start to think a bit more about is also then canter transitions. We've done a few of them, all right, and uh, in the very beginning he actually was a little bit explosive. He went, uh, sprinted across Lexi out, sprinted across the the paddock a little bit, but that has improved tremendously. He just didn't really understand and was uh, maybe I didn't prepare it enough. He was a bit surprised. So he's become a lot better with that, but maybe we'll look into that next, next time a bit. And uh, another thing that we still need to work more on is also definitely the impulse, getting him more from behind, getting him straighter and uh, correcting the beat in the tilt. He is not always clear there. He's still also just adapting, I guess, in some ways to that new shape, being a bit lower. And as I said, he had did, he only had a training really as a five-year-old a bit. Oh. And then that was 
really all he had. And then years just outside getting fat, playing with his mates, doing nothing. So <laughs> this is uh, all, um, yeah, all a process. And it does take a time. It's just how it is. Now again, a little bit at the end, just a couple of transitions into tilt. Oh, good girl, Lexi, that's better. Now the dog finally has settled there. <laughs> She's young as well and not much trained. And again, here at in the, to the tilt, ah, he lifts a little bit. I keep a bit of contact, wait for him. Squeeze a little bit my seat, try to get that energy a little bit forward. There. <laughs> And follow him up, comes a little bit too high, there, releasing, oh, nice. there we go. And then, as I said in the very beginning, if you have a horse that is a little bit hard to stay in the trot, be happy with just a few steps. Practice the transitions, use the voice signal, definitely, lean maybe a bit forward as I do, also to just clear the back, make sure that they have the space to go down and stretch and all that, but also feel, uh, yeah, you use as many signals as you can in a way, you know, combine voice signal, maybe even touch the withers with your hands. Because after all, when you get into a situation where you're maybe thinking about competition or whatever, and there is a bit more stress involved and you're maybe a little bit tenser than normal, the horse picks up on that obviously. And then having voice signal, having physical signal touching the withers, something like that, will sometimes help just to get that idea into the horse's head. And then that can help tremendously, actually. And then, of course, building up that consistency and that uh, stability can only, I find, happen if you are able to have a bit of a contact. Completely loose rein trot can work as just to get the idea that trot is allowed, trot is okay. But then you have to be able to touch the reins and influence the top line because how otherwise are you actually going to yeah, work build on it? Oh, oh, there we go. Now, handsome. Yeah. Thank you for today and we'll do more sometime soon again. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, and if you like these videos, then maybe you can contribute only if you feel like. There is a link there, PayPal me, if you like. Thanks again, Disa and Kalsey.